Hi there, I just want to take the time to talk about um, what makes great teaching a report that was commissioned by the Sutton Trust and various other um, ap academic uh, people interested in teaching. There's some really interesting points from it. But before we go into that, I think it's worth quickly uh, talking about um, some of the terminology used when talking about uh, correlations. So if you've got two factors, okay, now for instance you could uh, take an example from physics where we know that force is directly proportional to acceleration and if you increase the force you increase the acceleration and you get a direct correlation. It's really easy to measure that. An example that might not be as perfect, that one indicates, it, indicates essentially that the um, the matching up of force and acceleration is, is spot on basically, that's what correlation of one means. Okay. An example which might be less perfect might be for instance there's an exercise called deadlift which is uh, where a person lifts a weight straight off the ground and they just bring it up to their waist. So if a person was standing here they've got to pull that stand up with that weight using their glutes basically their hamstrings and, and back muscles to pull the weight up to about here. Okay. Now if you put deadlift weight here and sprint time for 100 meters here, sprint time, you might get some kind of correlation like this. It's probably down here actually. It's probably more like a 0.3 correlation, right? So increasing deadlift probably does increase the sprint time, right? And actually it does, uh, but deadlift alone is not going to tell you how fast someone is because they could also be massively overweight or uh, have an extremely good power to weight ratio. There's loads of other factors that come into it, and that's why the correlation well actually it's probably more like this correlation, is less um, direct, it's less perfect. Okay, And when you have zero correlation at all, it's probably likely that there's no connection between these things at all. Okay, Now, I have been talking about, now in physics we think force does cause acceleration, Okay, um, for various other reasons as well. But correlation does not mean directly causation. Okay. Um, for instance, a great example is this one, which I've just stolen off the internet from somewhere. Ice cream sales go up, shark attacks go up. Okay, so therefore, um, one causes the other. Shark attacks cause people to eat ice cream, or you know, and you could come up with a theory as to why, because people come for eat after they've been chewed on or lost a relative to a shark attack. But it's likely, actually, in this case, um, that hot weather causes increased consumption of shark attacks and increased frequency of visiting the beach and therefore it's the weather that's causing both of these. So it's it's easy to fall into the trap of uh, thinking that something caused something else when it didn't. Okay. So bearing all this in mind, let's go to the report. Okay. So this is a nice little extract which I found very interesting. I'm going to actually read it in full. A further concern is that in practice any kinds of observational measures provide at best poor approximation as to how much students actually learn. Okay. Whether they are based on classroom observation, student surveys, book scrutiny, or other sources, their predictive power is usually not high. For example, even in high-quality right, research studies such as this one, the measure, measures of effective teaching project, okay, the median coloration between the range of value-added and observational weighting, so essentially we're comparing, uh, if you're a teacher you know what we're on about, value-added scores maybe, value added value added with uh, grade okay sorry but value added with teacher uh, with uh, observer feedback I suppose what the observer saw the observer comes into your lesson watches and makes a prediction about how well you're going to do okay this is what you actually achieve this is what they see okay this is what they see this is the type of correlation we're getting so the medium correlation between range of value added presenta uh, presenters um, sorry um, the median correlation between the range of value added and observational weighting was only 0.3 right so that's what you're looking at some problem comes into your room they watch you this is about as accurately as they're going to be able to predict how much value added you're going to add okay so in practice it means that if we were to use the classroom observation ratings to identify teachers as above or below average in their impact on student learning, we would get it right about 60% of the time. Right? So it's, it's not bad 60% of the time, but it's not very it's still not good. I mean you wouldn't want to be sacked or um, 
or making decisions about pay based on observations. Okay, so it's not much better than really by chance. Okay. Okay. There is information in classroom observation, but not enough to base important decisions on it. And of course, this is um, in the best case, right? In the best case, with researchers who spent who who are not stressed and who aren't uh, in the middle of term time working, you know, they're in a school. Um, they're coming in and they're they're taking a you know. They're probably checking each other's work as well, checking each other's observations and all kinds of stuff. If you've just got one person in the room with you watching you, that's going to be really dangerous. Okay, so this is basically what the best Ofsted inspector in the world could achieve. Okay, and by best, I don't mean he's nice to you or she's nice to you. I mean the this is the um, the person with the most acute sense of what's going on and, and, and observation. Okay, right. So what does this actually mean for teachers? It means that even trying to do this is a complete waste of time right doing things for an inspector trying to achieve an outstanding right? you know it might make your life easier for a day but in reality um, it's not it's not something that correlates well with student progress okay and we're in it for the student progress so anytime you have a company trying to sell your school how to get your teachers to get Ofsted outstanding? They're essentially selling rubbish. It's not. It's not of any use, really. I mean, it's nice, I suppose, to have lots of teachers coming out with Ofsted outstanding, but it will not guarantee good grades, right? So, in my opinion, this I wouldn't bother reading this article. Okay. So let's have a look at something else. Value added is an interesting topic. It's something that tells you. Uh, based on some other measure how much progress you would get you would expect a student to make and then if you're above that expected progress or below it okay so you're adding value if you're doing that now there's loads of arguments as to whether the way value added is measured is accurate okay this sort of talks about this quite nicely okay so um, in this paper it's pointed out that our natural tendency to look for explanations is stable characteristics of individuals and under, 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 underestimate situational variability may lead us to overinterpret value added measures as indicating a property of the teacher related to this. Uh, related to this is evidence about the stability of estimates of, from VAMS. Okay, so we're going to look at that now. So basically, people can easily get your value added measure and make decisions about you as a teacher um, and get it completely wrong. Now I've actually got pretty good value added recently but the reality is quite a lot of that could be out of situational variability. In other words, chance, lucky you know, guesses or lucky, um, lucky effects of having say maybe a friend group in the room who were quite productive and it was nothing to do with my impact um, or um, favorable uh, well there's all kinds of multitude of variables that could be having that impact that I don't have any any bearing on okay and this is this is uh, meted out really here by especially not in um, so the correlation year to year for value added measures for uh, I think this one's for prime no that's for elementary schools so this is American but in elementary schools it's not massively high as you can see but in middle schools, again, it's an American thing, between 0.3 and 0.7. So I wouldn't mind being up at the 0.7 bit and being measured off my value added year to year if this is how accurate it was at 0.7. But I would have a bit of a problem if it was down at 0.3. Okay? So the value added measures themselves are subject to quite a lot of um, error. And the truth is, they are the very best measures that we've got. Um, so, um, again, the take home from this is is that we don't really know what causes good learning to happen um, apart from after after the after the event has taken place. It does appear that uh, in the same paper there's loads of stuff about teach student voice being pretty useful and students can tell you when they're learning well. Um, obviously there's issues with that with uh, teacher motivation and stuff but um, uh, I find this quite heartening because uh, things that really do strongly correlate are things like teachers' subject knowledge, which can be tested, especially in the more science-based uh, maths and science-based um, uh, topics and, and subjects to be taught. 
Okay, so I hope you've found that interesting, and have a good day.